What's your definition of a godly man? And what's your definition of a godly woman? And how do we get that message out uh, broadly like they're doing in their campaign of pro propaganda? And then what's the responsibility of the church? I think they've let us down. So that's a, that's a three prong question. If you can you know, concisely give us your answer to that, I think it'll be very uh, inspiring and, and, and uh, it'll be very uh, revealing to what we're missing in society today. I think a godly man and woman is just um, someone that actually has morals, values and integrity and they live by that. Um, you know, there's so, so much temptation out here, but I think a godly man or woman understands that, okay, there, there's temptation out here, but this is my purpose in this earth realm, and this is what I'm supposed to do, and this is what I'm going to do to fulfill my purpose in this earth realm. When it comes to the church, yes, the church has really let us down because the church started... Um, to keep members, you know, they realized, I guess, oh, my church is full of women. So let me just cater to the woman and make her feel like she is this, that, and a bag of chips. And they started teaching this message as well that you can do bad all by yourself. All you need is Jesus. As long as you got King Jesus, you don't need nobody else. Well, Jesus is not right here. I mean, you know, of course you have this relationship with him and he'll uh, teach you and tell you which way to go but a lot of them would say that because they were not with a man or they were trying to not be with the man so they would always say Jesus is my boyfriend or Jesus is my husband while they were fornicating and having these kids out of wedlock so Jesus is really getting around ain't he because I'm seeing all these babies with no no fathers around so I think the church let us down and the church just started really being passive to the alphabet mafia. The church stopped preaching sin because, you know, preaching against sin because it was hurting people's feelings. And when I, I remember being young, um, you know, maybe 18, 19, 20 years old or whatever, and sitting in church and the preacher could get up and I would think, oh, my God, was he looking at me last night? Did he know? Like, he'd be all in my business. Now, you know, years later, the preacher doesn't even talk about sin. You rarely hear the, the preacher say, flee fornication. You rarely hear the preacher say, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. You rarely hear the preacher say that to lay with a man, to lay with a, a, another man is an abomination or a sin. You rarely hear that. Now all you hear is get ready, get ready, get ready. Your blessing is on the way. That's that we turned into prosperity preachers instead of actually helping people, um, you know, live life and figure out life and how they should actually walk day to day. So yes, the church has failed because the church is not dependent upon God. The church has started to be dependent upon man and tithes and the money coming in and you can't serve God and mammon. And so the church, yes, has failed us because they have started to bow to people instead of to God. 